Perfect. So you guys today, first of all, thank you for being on here. You know, I know a lot of us are, are like used to getting on Monday, Wednesday, Friday to kind of fill up our cups. And the truth is, as our leaders are out filling up their cups, um, I think it's only fair that we kind of rise to the occasion because they've trained us really well. So thank you all for being here. I'm super grateful for every single person that's on here right now. And today I really wanted to talk about three key things that are going to help you be successful. It doesn't matter if you're in network marketing, it doesn't matter if you wanna look at your health and wellness journey, really just three key things. You know, the last call we talked about intentional consistency and that's gonna to apply to everything we talk about. But today I really wanna hone in on three major components to everything that you do, okay? And then within that, I wanna give you some tips to really help you be successful and then at the end, I'm just going to give you a quick bonus on some um, key objections if you are in network marketing that, you know, people have been asking me, Francis, what would you say about this? Francis, what would you say if this person asked you this? And so I just want to share what I say. I, I'm no means an expert, you guys, but I just share from my heart and I do try to be strategic when I have conversations with people. So let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about, you guys, is accountability. A lot of us, uh, and I know I love the webs because they talk about mastering self. It is truly one of the most important things you could ever do in your life. And shout out to you guys that are on here because you have half of the battle already accomplished. It's the awareness, the awareness that I have to show up. How many of y'all, keep it real with me in the chat. I'm gonna open the chat box, but keep it real with me in the chat. How many of y'all kind of questioned, like, should I get on that call today? Like, keep it real. I've done that for morning mentorship calls where I'm like, running, trying to do laundry, get my baby to school, maybe have an appointment. How many of y'all have questions showing up before, right? On a call that maybe wasn't at a very convenient time for you. And I, I share that because those are the moments where you have to let your awareness overpower what you feel like doing. And we talked about that with consistency on Monday is making sure exactly, Tiffany, but the awareness that you know I need to be filling up my cup to show up as the best me possible, you already won half of the battle. So congratulations if you're on this call, right? Because it's the easy thing to do and, and the, the lack of accountability thing to do is to say, you know what, I'm just not gonna get on that call, right? Like, I'm just not gonna get on. There are people that have really valid, valid reasons. And so I'm not talking about them, right? I'm not here to, to talk bad about anyone or anything, but I'm just saying the people that really know they could have made the extra sacrifice, like put in an earpiece or, you know, kind of stop the dishes or, or put it on loud on a Bluetooth speaker while the dishes are going. I'm, I'm laughing at this really quick because when it comes to accountability, I wanna talk about me and Shelly for a second we were literally on our way back from the gym and a healthy lunch and it was time for morning mentorship and I kid you not Shelly keep it real in the chat we were literally having to take a shower to go out into the city and do a couple things and we put Randy's morning mentorship call about going chairman in 90 days on my big like bluetooth rolling speaker and I put it in between both bathrooms on the loudest possible sound so that we could get the information while we were taking a shower. Like that's real life, but that's where accountability comes in. Cause here's, here's the thing, you guys, I'm not here to sugarcoat anything with y'all cause the web don't sugarcoat anything for us. Okay. If you don't hold yourself accountable, why do you have such a high standard of wanting others to keep you accountable? Think about it. We talked about the same thing with consistency. A lot of us are not getting closer or progressing in the ways we feel like we should because we lack the basic things that we need to be requiring of ourselves first. So I'm gonna give you four tips when it comes to accountability because this is something so many people struggle with. I'm human, I've struggled with the same thing. But when it comes to accountability, there's four key things that I really think are going to help you. And I love Eric Worre because he talks about this. And we're going to talk about deciding to be a professional in network marketing or in whatever it is that you're doing. But the first thing is, you guys, you got to write it down. You got to get very specific about what it is that you want. I ended the call Monday encouraging you guys to figure out what it is that you really want. Because if you don't know what you want, how are you expecting for others to advocate for what you want? Something, something's weird right there, right? And so we got to get clear about what it is that we want because then the accountability piece, 
comes a little easier. I'm not saying it's easy. I just said it comes a little easier, okay? Because you still have to get clear, right? David and Manitia talks about it. A lot of the greats talk about this. Writing it down, right? Write the vision, make it plain. What is it that you want? And be specific. Don't be afraid to be writing on your paper that you want to get to your company's next rank within this many days and write that down. How, what is that rank? How many people does it take? And by what date do you want to do that? Because here's the thing. A lot of us are upset that we're not getting closer to our goals, but you haven't even written down I want to get to the first rank in my company. I want to get to the second rank. It takes this many people by this day. So how can you be accountable if you don't know what you're working for and your time frame? I want y'all to think about the workforce because I used to be a corporate employee. When I was in the corporate world, I had deadlines. Can y'all agree? How many of us have worked the job and they give you deadlines? Like this has to be done by Tuesday at four o'clock. And so we got to understand that sometimes we need to use our previous programming in this game of network marketing to our advantage. And so get first things first, write down what that thing is, but don't be afraid to be very specific because you are used to someone telling you specifically what has to get done by what date. And sometimes, can I be really real with y'all? Y'all know I like to keep it real. Sometimes in in entrepreneurship, we use that, the fact that somebody tells you what to do and how to do it and when to do it. We always look at it very negatively, right? Can y'all agree? Drop a one in the chat if you hear that from a very negative perspective a lot of the times, right? You're not being successful because nobody's telling you what to do for the first time. And that's that's right. It's correct. I'm I'm not debating that. That's correct. You aren't having success because you're not having people tell you what to do all the time. But can we look at it from a positive perspective this morning and say, you know what? I'm going to start keeping myself accountable and I'm going to write down exactly what I want and by when I want it so that that way I'm able to actually fight for self-accountability. Let's be positive about the fact that for once, no one is telling you what to do by when and, and, and how. Do it for yourself, right? Write that thing down as if someone were telling you what to do because someone is. The someone is you, okay? And you are the most important component in this whole thing. Um, And I saw somebody asking for the password, you guys, on the Legacy Worldwide Facebook group because somebody go and just drop. The password is freedom and all low. Oh, she's on here. Never mind, y'all. So that's number one. Write it down. Get specific. How many people? What is the volume? What is the thing? What is the date? Okay. Second thing for accountability is y'all, you have to proclaim it. Okay. I'm going to tell you part of the reason, and this is so selfish, but part of the reason why I love the song that I play all the time, Big by Pastor Mike Jr. is because for me, that song reminds me that I need to be proclaiming the things over my life that I want. I talk about this all the time. Can we stop talking so much about what we currently have that we do not want? And can we start proclaiming more of the things that we want that we do not yet have? Let me run that back one time. We need to stop proclaiming all the things in our lives that we currently have that we do not want, because that's AKA negative. And the positive route you need to take is start to proclaim all the things that you do not have yet that you want. Because when we're so focused on, man, I'm not where I want to be. I suck. All these things. Cancel, cancel. You are what you focus on grows, right? Where there is focus, there is expansion. And you don't even realize it, but the fact that you're so upset about the things you haven't done, the things you, 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 the goal you haven't hit, the P150 you haven't done, the P600 you haven't done, you don't even realize it. But right here, you keep tell, you're, you're continuing to tell yourself, give me more of that because that's all I'll talk about. Instead of saying, you know what? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for the day that I'm going to smash P600. Shout out to Shelly. She's a P600 loading, y'all. Right? For Ashley Johnson, I'm so excited for the day I'm about to smash P1000. Remember, in step one, you're going to identify that day. And so start to proclaim it. And, and back to the song I love, I love it because he says, you ought to declare it over your own life. Say, I believe. And we're going to talk about belief last. 
Yes, Chuck, it's done, man. So proclaim it. And sometimes you want to know how you do this. For some of us, we need a um, for some of us, we need a public declaration. You guys, I'm not afraid to say on Facebook Live that I'm going chairman. It doesn't mean that I know I'm going chairman tomorrow, but that's my proclamation and my accountability to me that I'm going to go chairman. The timing doesn't matter. I don't care about that because I know what's tied to it. So for some of us, we might need some public proclamation. And a lot of people might debate this. They might say, ooh, don't share your goals with the wrong people. Don't share your vision because sometimes people will hinder it. No, you're just sharing it with the wrong people. You're just sharing it with the wrong people. There is nothing more powerful than you publicly knowing where you're going. But that takes privately knowing where you're going. Y'all with me? Drop an eight if you're like, yep, that makes sense. I'm about to proclaim and declare this over my own life. I believe. So proclamation is number two, tip number two. Tip number three is create rewards for yourself, you guys. And I'm not saying go ham, because look, I'm a big advocate of financial freedom. Hence why I haven't had my nails done in about 50, 11 years, okay? This is my choice, I promise. It's my choice. This is my sacrifice season, okay? But I want you to start creating rewards for yourself. And let me explain what rewards can look like. But the reward, here's the key. The reward has to come with doing. You can't be not taking action and be like, oh, I've been trying for five weeks, so I'm just going to go treat myself to a $200 steak. That's not the kind of reward I mean, okay? You have to actually be in action doing the things, okay? So uh, rewards. Our brains, psychologically, we are programmed to thrive off of reward, right? Uh, for some of us, it's not a monetary reward. For some of us, it's going to get a massage. For some of us, it's, ooh, I'm going to walk into Barnes & Nobles. I'm telling my little dirty secret right now, by the way, or the half price bookstore. I'm going to walk in there with my coffee, and I'm going to sit in the corner where nobody can see me, and I'm going to grab a whole bunch of books. And I said I was only coming here for one book, but I'm going to get five because they're on sale. <laughs> like, what is, your, what is the reward that you like? Because for a lot of people, it's not monetary. I'm gonna keep it real though. That, that chairman 10 reward looks real good right now, but figure out what kind of rewards you like. Is it going to get your feet done? Is it going to get a massage? Is it going to leave the kids at aftercare for one day? So you can have two hours for yourself. I'm telling on myself, I do it all the time with Amara. Okay. That'd be my reward. The daycare could stay with her just two more hours. Okay. So what is your reward? Because see what happens is if we don't create rewards, you will start to get discouraged because naturally our human nature, we tend to start getting upset when we don't feel like we've gotten to the ultimate goal yet. So psychologically, we're programmed to want to be rewarded, right? To want some kind of recognition. But you guys, self-recognition is really powerful. You need to stop looking for that in other people and do it for you. So let me give you an example. You set a goal and you say, you know what? I'm going to accomplish P150 this month. That's helping three new families. So that reward for you might be, I'm going to go get a massage when I smash P150. For you, it might be, you know what? When I hit P600, I'm going to take the family out to dinner because I recognize that they've been helping out. They've been making sacrifices while I get on Zoom, all the things, right? Does that make sense about rewards? And then when you hit the bigger goals, you pay off, a ton of that debt that you've been wanting to pay off, now you can say, you know what? I'm going to go and I'm going to spend $200 on myself and just get some things that I've been wanting that I, I sacrificed for the bigger goal. Y'all, I'm going to tell y'all, I talk about this all the time and I joke about it, but I'm really serious. My student loans, y'all, when I pay those things off, I'm probably going to ask a couple of y'all if y'all want to come to lunch. Okay, so you better be ready for the invite. Don't turn me down, y'all, when I ask you if you want to go to lunch. Because when I hit that goal, my reward is a fancy lunch. And I'm not even going to look at the prices on the menu. Okay, because that's, that's, a big, that's a big deal for me. And so I have a reward attached to that. So, so focus on creating some kind of a reward. I'm not saying go crazy every time you hit a little goal. No, don't go crazy. Your, your goal is financial freedom. Don't go crazy. But do reward yourself. Do go sit for ice cream by yourself without the kids so they don't ask you for a lick, okay? <laughs> like, go reward yourself. It feels really good. And then you tell your brain, hey, you've been doing a crazy good job, sis, bro. Let's keep going. 
Because when you don't reward yourself with little things on the way or little moments, because they don't always have to be things. Y'all, some little moments, I will tell Mara's dad with the quickness, you need to take your daughter tonight, go to another room because I'm going to go take a hot shower for 40 minutes and nobody better knock on the door. That's a reward for me because I don't get to normally do that. And so think about what kind of rewards you could be giving yourself in between, because then guess what? I feel refreshed and I'm like, bring it on. I'm getting on social media and I'm going to invite 15 people. Like that's a reward for me. So figure out what that is for you. Number four, some people are not going to agree with this, but some of us are not staying consistent because we don't have penalties. I'm going to say that again. Some of us, let me take a sip of this y'all. Cause I got thirsty saying that. Some of us are not holding ourselves accountable. We're not staying intentionally consistent like we talked about Monday because you don't have penalties. What is your penalty for when you don't do what you say you're gonna do? You wanna know what penalty I pay sometimes? I gotta stay up an extra hour, even when I'm dead tired. Some of us are just not doing anything because we don't have penalties. And let me tell you, if you have a why, such as your kids, uh, maybe a parent that you really want to help, like my mom is such a big part of my why, I sit and I think all the time, what is the penalty if I don't get to where I need to go to help my mom? You want to know what's the penalty? Looking at the person that sacrificed her entire being to make sure I had possibility. That's a penalty. You want to know what's the penalty when I look at my daughter? And right now, you know, I've been transparent with a lot of you who have asked, but my daughter is having some, just some little delays, delay not denied because my baby's smart, but she's having some hiccups with her speech and she's a part of a program right now that's going to end, okay? And once the program ends, I will, we will, me and her dad, we'll have to do a lot of these therapy sessions and things straight out of pocket, no program, anything. And so for me, what is a penalty if I don't get to P5000? My baby speech therapy is a penalty. And I'm sorry, but I'm gonna keep it real with parents on the line. Look, I'm sweating. Hold on, let me open the window a little crack because I'm sweating giving y'all this one right here. You wanna know what's a penalty for me? The fact that if I don't get done or do the things that I say I'm going to do, my daughter doesn't get quality speech therapy. I'm talking to a parent on the line. Maybe for your kids, it's a sport. Maybe for them, it's, it's uh, something else. But what is the penalty if you keep not doing the things you say you're going to do? For some of us, we're so wrapped up in, in self and, oh my gosh, today I'm just not feeling like myself. I'm not feeling good. Feelings don't pay the bills. We got to exit, okay? That's the strategy, exit. You got to exit, okay? But for some of it, so for some of us, the reason we're not moving or getting into action is because you have no penalty. You haven't even thought about the penalty. You're only thinking about the moment. Oh, I don't feel like it today because insert the excuse. It only sounds good to you because you made it. But for a lot of us, we need a penalty. I want to share a story with you guys that I'll never forget. I went to an event with a previous company that I was building. And Eric Worry, one of my favorite people in network marketing, he shared a story about this gentleman. His name was Aiden, I think. Uh, I might be getting his name wrong, whatever, that's not important. But he talked about creating a penalty for Aiden at a public event. It was like six, seven, 8,000 people at this event, right? And this is what I, wanna, what I wanna say by penalty. I don't mean penalty as in like physically punishing yourself, but some of y'all need some self-punishment because because you you're not doing you're not doing anything like what are we doing so he shared the story and it was so powerful because in the moment that they shared it i needed this story and the story was this this guy was at an event he was in the front and eric worry asked him tell me uh, by a show of hands how many people like sports right so the guy raised his hand and Eric Worre asked him, what is a team that you absolutely hate? Like, you hate this team in sports. For me, it's the Boston Red Sox. I'm a Yankee fan. You can debate what you want. We can agree to disagree. We're adults. But I hate the Boston Red Sox, okay? I will, you will never catch me in a Red Sox jersey if it nothing. No, it's not happening. I'm a Yankee fan. I grew up 10 minutes from the Yankee Stadium. So if Cindy Leader watches this replay, I love you, sis, but I'm not with it. Boston Red Sox are trash. Anyway, 
wait, I digress. So he asked this man, what is your favorite team? Like, what is the team you hate? I mean, excuse me, hate. And the guy's like some Liverpool something. I don't know what team it was. It was like a soccer team. So Eric Worre asked him a couple questions. He said, how long have you been at the rank that you've been at? And y'all, I swear, if you're anything like me, this is going to hit you. Because when I heard it, I was like, oh, Eric, you talking to me, bro? You ever been to church, y'all? And you're like, God, is that you coming down with your sandals, pushing me to the front of the church? Because that message was for me. You, that ever happened to you? I really felt like this when I heard Eric Worre telling the story. And he said, listen. Uh, how long have you been at the rank that you're at? The guy said about two years, right? He's been at that same rank. I was like, you really talking to me? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Then he said, okay, do you deserve the next rank that you're saying you want? And the guy's like, yeah, I deserve it. And so I want you to be asking yourself these questions as I'm asking you the questions that Eric Worre asked him. So Eric Worre says, do you deserve that, that next rank, that, that monetary you know, reward? And the guy's like, yeah, I deserve it. And then Eric Worre goes, do you know what it takes? And the guy's like, yeah, for some of y'all, y'all don't know what it takes. So therefore, you don't know where you want to go. We're going to talk about clarity in a second. But he's asking him, do you know what it takes? And the guy's like, yeah. And then he asks him, um, are you willing to be accountable, right, to yourself and with your peers and everybody in this room? And the guy's like, yeah, yeah, you know, I'm willing to do it. So then... Um, Eric Worre says, well, if you get there, you know, congratulations, like you, you kept your word to you, but here's the penalty if you don't get there. Cause see, some of us ain't getting there cause we don't have penalties. So he tells, Eric Worre tells the guy, if you don't get there, you're going to have to put that team as your Facebook cover photo for the whole month of January, because they established a deadline. The guy said he would do it by January 1st. So, and it was the holiday season, mind you, 90 days. So uh, Eric Ward is asking him, like, are you sure? Are the holidays going to be a distraction? And he's like, no. So the penalty is you would have to put that team as your Facebook cover photo. You will have to wear a, a T-shirt for most of the month that says you love that team. And on top of that, you have to attend a game of your favorite team and wear the jersey of the team you hate. And Eric Ward said that guy got purple in the face. Because he literally told Eric Worre, I would die before I ever do that. I'm not doing that. And guess what happened to Aiden or whatever? His name might have been Avian. I don't know. It started with an A and sound like a DIN. Okay. I don't remember. But guess what happened? In 90 days, not only did he smash that rank, but he went up two other ranks. Because guess what? He had a penalty. For some of us, we don't have a penalty, so it doesn't hurt enough. You need to write the penalty out and figure out why it is that you have to stay so consistent because y'all we're adults we always gonna be tired the kids ain't gonna be acting right the jobs ain't gonna be acting right you ain't gonna feel good some days you ain't gonna want to make it to the gym you're not gonna want to talk to that person on social media so what what's your penalty you don't have one and that's the problem I'm gonna move on but I wanted to tell that story because I was like for me right now second core thing I wanted to talk about today was clarity because this ties into all those things about accountability a lot of y'all are just waiting to be motivated to get clear about what you want. Motivation, you guys, is, is a lie. You've heard a lot of leaders say it. I don't have to keep saying that. Motivation is a lie. You can have some motivation every now and again, but you need that coupled with discipline and dedication. Motivation is not it. I'm not motivated to drive to this gym after this because I'm parked in the Starbucks parking lot like... Okay, I don't need more caffeine because I'm drinking associates, but I could sure eat a, a almond croissant right now. But after I'm done with y'all, I'm gonna roll up the window and drop away. <laughs> like I lost my dog, okay? Because motivation it is a lie. Today I'm not motivated. So I sure do want to roll up the drive-thru when I get out. And, and if I back up, I'm literally like at the drive-thru, but I'm not gonna do it, y'all. I'm not gonna do it. Because I'm dedicated to staying healthy. I have a penalty. My penalty is if I don't get healthier by May 20th when I have a surgery coming up, I pay the price in recovery. Some of y'all don't have a penalty. Get yourself right, y'all. But the lack of clarity is going to be the reason why you can't do a lot of those things in the accountability steps. Because if you don't know what it takes to get to where you want to go, it's like you playing darts and have no dartboard. You're saying you want to go P600. Do you know what that means? And for a lot of us, it, 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 this is not about shame, guilt, none of that. This is about, okay, if you don't know what it takes, 
you need to become a professional in what it is that you're doing. So many of y'all keep treating it like a side thing and it's sure paying you like a side thing because the side don't need, the side be costing some. So if you, what I'm trying to say is if you don't know what it takes to go P600, decide to become a professional, go open the comp plan. And, and if you can't figure it out, ask some questions. You guys, I'm so grateful for our opportunity because we have an entire launch website that has a training that specifically breaks down how it only takes 12 people to make $600 a month, 12 families that need this. So if you don't, if you're not clear about that being what it takes, then of course, when it comes to the accountability part, how are you going to keep yourself accountable if you don't know like the what? I'm not saying no the how, I'm saying the what. The what is it takes 12 people to go P600. Guess what? Your mentor, your coach can help you with 40% of that goal. So congratulations. To make 600 bucks a month, it literally takes you helping seven families. I help with five. Like, I'm keeping it real with y'all. Those are the numbers. P1000, the numbers are simple. It's 30 people. Your mentor can help you with 40% of that. Bust out a calculator and multiply what is 30 people times 40%. You got to know what it takes. You got to get clear. Okay. Clarity is a big deal. You guys, because here's the thing. When you, when you have a lack of clarity, it's easy for you to not get on the zoom. It's easy for you to not get on the call, go in chairman in 90 days. It's easy to not get on go live. Cause you're saying you busy. If you're not clear, that part is easy. So get clear, you guys. The next one is belief, man. I could spend a lot of time on this one. Cause y'all, I have to work on my belief every single day. But there are certain things that I'm solid about. I don't question at all. And I want to encourage you guys, these three core pieces within belief that you need to get more clear about because some of y'all are struggling because you're not clear about some of these things I'm about to say. Remember, clarity, like these literally all go into the other, right? So belief, I want to talk about what we do specifically because there's three core pieces of belief that tie into what we do on a daily basis or what we're not doing on a daily basis. The first one is gonna be belief in you. And Mila said something so good in the chat. I'm, I'm seeing the, the comments come up. Understanding belief will change your life. So I encourage you, go look up David and Manitia on YouTube. Go, go see what he says about belief, what other greats are saying about studying belief. Because here's the thing, if you don't believe in you, you're gonna have a harder time. But here's the caveat to that, there's a catch you can start to, to get into action by borrowing other people's belief, y'all. Because there are gonna be some days where you need someone to breathe a little bit of belief into you so you can be reminded of what you're capable of. I can't tell you how many times I second guess myself and I love to earn my mentorship. And I would, I would call, I would text Wanda. I don't just call her. I would text her, hey, do you have five minutes of availability for me to dump? Like, and it just took for her to say, hold up, hold up. Listen to what you just said. And that little breath of belief in me gave me the, the it, like, it, it just reminded me that I do believe in me, but sometimes I just get foggy, right? It's life. It's, it, it happens to the best of us. But some of us are struggling because you don't believe in you. But here's my question. Why do you want so many people to believe in you, your family, your friends, all these people, when you don't believe in you? I'm gonna be transparent about a moment because there was a period of time in my life when I was doing network marketing and I really had this narrative in my head that my spouse didn't believe in me. And I had to get really real with myself and I'm gonna tell you why, because in this phase of my network marketing that I'm talking about, I was building a health and wellness company or trying to, right? It was like my second go round in network marketing. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, how I was doing it. I wasn't coachable, okay? And so for the longest time, I felt like he didn't believe in me. And I would struggle with that, right? Some of us might struggle with maybe having a spouse that you feel like doesn't believe in you. Can I tell you something? It's not that they don't believe in you as a person. They just don't believe in the thing you're doing. But here's another thing that I had to realize. The reason why I was coming up with that in my head so much is because I wasn't consistent. That's for somebody on here today. I had that story in my head because when things would get hard, I would start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. The first week I was like, yeah, I'm going to the top of the company. 
a couple of people said no to me and I'm like, forget, forget this. I'm not doing this. And then I would get on a call and I would get re-inspired because see, I was focused on wanting somebody to motivate me. I wasn't dedicated. I wasn't clear. I didn't have no self-accountability. And so, yeah, I'm going to think he doesn't believe in me because I start, stop, start, stop. I'm paying for all these health and wellness products, but then I'm eating a pizza. Of course, you're going to feel like somebody doesn't believe in you. But you have to break out of that and do the things you're going to say you're going to do so that your belief in you is solid. And then everything else is just confetti, right? When I got serious about my first network marketing opportunity, that was like, okay, I'm going to build this as a business. Like, I, I'm going to build this thing. There was nothing anybody could say to me. I still struggled. I'm human. But in my home, he observed the consistency. And it was like, okay, I see you. I see you. Keep going. And then it was like, oh, shit, maybe he does believe in me just a little bit. But it was never about him not believing in me. It was about watching firsthand that I, I couldn't even be consistent in this thing that I'm professing that I want so much. Y'all following me? Does that make sense? Drop some sevens because for some of us, we might be around people who we think don't believe in us, but that's not the problem. That's not what they don't believe in. They just don't believe in the thing we're doing because we keep start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. They don't know which S to believe. You starting or you stopping. And you just got to keep going. And then you will have those one-off people that they just crazy. You just got to just, just distance, love them from a distance, okay? While you get the things done, you say you're going to do. But see, the thing is, if you keep going and you do the things you say you're going to do, eventually they're going to be like, oh, they were serious. I forget who I was talking to a couple of days ago that somebody was asking them, you still do that crypto thing? I sure do. I sure do. Belief in you. The next thing is belief in your company. Some of y'all, I'm sorry. I'm really not sorry, but if this steps on your toes, it's okay. Just like pull them out, stretch them out. Okay. I love you. But some of us have shiny object syndrome because we don't fully believe in our company. I love Matt Rosa because he said, if it's things, it's for you. It's okay. If it's things, that means we're disinfecting a part that needs to be disinfected. You can't heal what you hide from. Some of y'all are hiding from the fact that you don't believe in I am. And I'm about to step on some more toes. I promise y'all, I love y'all to death, okay? I love y'all. But I'm gonna step on them again because I'm gonna tell you where your unbelief of I am comes from. One, you don't know enough about what you're representing. You haven't taken the time to get to an event to hear Chris Terry from his mouth and Isis Terry from their mouth spew out this vision about people. You guys, they are billionaires. They don't need to be here. He has a skill that he's offering up to us every single day. And I'm talking about the person that doesn't even want to get on go live. And you're wondering why you can't build a business. Because we have a, a billionaire CEO who knows this skill for real, who has created a structure to offer it up to the average person like you and I. He doesn't have to be here. He takes zero profit from this company. And you know why some of us have shiny object syndrome? Because you haven't taken the time to go to an event. You haven't taken the time to get on go live. You have not taken the time to truly understand what you have access to. And so you don't have belief in the company because you don't even know what you really have in front of you. And then for some of y'all, this is where the penalty ties in. You don't have a penalty, so you feel like you're just going to get to it when you get to it. There's no sense of urgency in your life. And can I tell you, when you don't have a sense of urgency in your life, God doesn't have a sense of urgency to making himself more apparent to you. Because the truth is, he's never left for my believers on the line. And if you're not, I encourage you, go look for him. He'll find you. The truth is, he never left. And for some of us, we're like, God, please um, give me some clarity if this is the right place to be. You don't need the clarity. He already gave it to you. What you need is to get up off your butt and remind yourself that anything can change in any moment. I heard someone say in the rank makers group and I, I loved it because she said, I want some of y'all's problem is you have no sense of urgency. Some of you are just doing network marketing like, oh yeah, you know, that's the goal. I'm going to get there one day. What if your company went away in two years? Would you move different? Let me know in the chat. I'm guilty. I've had moments. If this company was going away in two years, would you move different? 
And it was when me and someone on this line heard that, that we said, oh no, we got to move different. This ain't a game. We are changing. Like, listen, y'all, this is no shade to any network marketing company. I love them all. I know successful people in every single company. I know somebody in It Works killing it. I know somebody in other companies, Trina, all type of companies killing it. But can I tell you what's so different about what we have here? People do not have to build this to have a change of life. They don't. And on top of that, the minute anything would ever change where this company wasn't around, which uh, we're a legacy company, eight years and still in momentum, customers are really here making real life change. You have busy executives creating online stores for them and their children as a college fund. You have people paying for their parents' medical expenses from the skill of trading. They never had to build the business if they didn't want to. And so understand that what we have here, you need to stop treating it like if it's just okay that you get to your goal, whether, and I don't care what the goal is. I'm not saying it has to be chairman, but some of us have zero sense of urgency. Exactly. At 3 p.m., you're going to hear from a doctor who turned into a full-time trader. But some of us don't have a sense of urgency as if we're just going to be, can I tell y'all something about I am, and I'm going to keep it really real with y'all because we're moving into a season economically that everyone is going to be needing to learn about crypto. Everyone will have to figure out a way to make money online that doesn't require selling a product. Again, I love other network marketing companies. It is all love. But the truth is this, if they don't sell their products, their shake, their pills, their thing, they do not make money. They could lie to the internet all day. They do not make money. They could try to build a business, but how can you build a shake business if you don't drink the shake? So realize what this company is really giving you. They are giving you a generational skill and you playing with it. Because for some of us, you have to develop on the business side. You have to get good at the skills. You have to decide to become a professional, but you know what you can do in the meantime? Learn the skill Chris Terry is blessing us with. But for some of y'all, there's no sense of urgency. So you're doing none of the above. And then wonder why it's so hard for you to talk about the academy. Because you don't even bother to get on go live and learn about what that candle is doing. You don't bother to get on go live and figure out there's a way to sell stuff on Facebook Marketplace. You need your, your belief in the company and your shiny object syndrome is not because the company don't have everything you possibly need. It's because you're not using the product. Therefore, you don't know what you really have. And I say that from the most grateful place ever, because as I was going through medical trial after medical trial after medical trial after freaking medical trial, with one eye, I was trading because I had a sense of urgency. I have to learn this. What's the alternative? My job was replaced by a freaking computer. And here by 2030, 30 more million jobs will be replaced by computers. And you have this opportunity of a lifetime in front of you and you playing with it. Somebody needs to tell you, quit playing with it. And I, and I promise you your belief in I am is untouchable. Not because you're gonna bash other companies, but because you know what's here. So there's no shiny little trading bot that's gonna be attractive to me. Cause I also know uh, the legal side of, of financial institutions and it's illegal but there's no little bot that's gonna make me be attracted by two to three percent a week because guess what i am gave me a skill that i could go on the charge at at my favorite times of the day and go make two percent in a day no income claims but that's not attractive to me two percent in a week is not attractive to me i can make two percent on one e-commerce item on Etsy, that's digital. That's not attractive to me. But when you become solid about what you know is here, you don't have shiny object syndrome. I'm happy for you, keep it pushing. There's no hate whatsoever in my heart because I know what I am is really doing for people. I know what it did for me in a season of my life that keep it real with y'all, if I had a nine to five in that season, 
I would have had to take unpaid FMLA. I did it when I was pregnant. So that's how I know. And so for some of us, your belief in this company is a lack of you not tapping into products that are here. And I'm not saying you got to be good at everything. One of the best pieces of advice that I could have heard a chairman give me when I first got started and I was hyper-focused on HFX and then I would get distracted by Forex and, and all the things is you do not have to be good at everything, but get good at something. Because with the way the world is changing, you guys, and I'm not here, most of y'all are a part of this opportunity. So I'm not here to resell you on I am. Listen, that's not my agenda. I don't got to resell anybody. But what I am here to remind you is y'all get a sense of urgency about your life. Some of us want a sense of urgency from everybody and their mama. And you don't even have a sense of urgency. And so your belief in the company is lacking because you don't use what you're paying for every month. And can I tell you, if you're a parent on the line, this one might hurt you. But quit stealing from your kids for an academy you don't use. I'm not trying to be cruel, but you got to get a sense of urgency about your life. Some people want to complain. The academy doesn't work. The skill is too hard. But you get on, on, you get on two days out of a whole month. Of course, it's not going to work. That's not consistent. You get on, uh, you take one trade. This, this is how it works. You take one trade off of our copy and paste apps and you say the educators don't know what they're doing because you took the one trade where the market decided to do what the market does. Ma'am, sir, no, you don't work. I love you, but you don't work and that's fine. But you gotta, you gotta know that your belief in this company is going to, to only level up every time you get on a chart. Y'all, shout out to Chairman Chuck because when I see this man's markup when he's trading Forex, and I see the snipe snipe, I'd be like, oh, I wish somebody would say something about I am. You better go ahead, Chuck. Because I know what I'm looking at. I use the products. But if you're an outsider within the company, you don't even know what, what he just posted because you don't use the products. So does that make sense? Drop an A if you're like, okay, I might have to up my belief in I am. And it's because I'm just not using what I'm paying for. Stop stealing from your family and get to using what you're paying for. And now the last piece is belief in network marketing. You guys, this belief in network marketing is so important because people get really weird about network marketing. I promise, they get real weird. You wanna know what I love about I am? Is that you don't have, like the network marketing is optional. Like it's 1000% optional, 1000%. You can have free tuition and call it a day. But some of us, that want to build the business, that see the comp plan and you're like, Chris Terry, you mean $750,000 a month and a pool bonus and an infinity, like infinity and pool, they go in the same sentence. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like I get that whole bonus for two years. Like when I first hit the rank for two years, I could get that. Okay. So what you're saying is chairman 10 is really like chairman 13,500, no income claims. Okay, sir. So some of us with the belief in the network marketing model, you got to check yourself. Can I tell you that within network marketing, we pay out more than the NBA and the NFL combined. Mic drop in case nobody knew that. And I'm going to talk about some objections because this whole, is that a pyramid thing? Y'all, it's 2022. You in a pyramid right now. And yes, it's a pyramid thing, but it's a pyramid that I could climb to the top and leave my people at the bottom. Like, I, I'm so confused, so confused. But you know that you will let that defeat you if you don't understand why network marketing is so powerful. You, will, you won't let that defeat you if you understand what residual income really is. You won't let that defeat you if you realize, yo, if I get to the end of my life, would I be mad that I didn't collect $10,000 a month and pass go? Like, so some of y'all are really struggling with objections because you're letting someone who doesn't understand network marketing confuse you about what you're learning about. Hold up. So I'm letting the outsider confuse me about a business that I know what's available. Okay, wait, that sounds really crazy. Hold up. So some of us need to increase our belief in network marketing. And I'm going to tell you one of the best books you could ever grab is the book GoPro by Eric Worre. And another, another book is Building an Empire by Brian Carruthers. Because here's the thing, right? You guys, with network marketing, understand that 
you're either, can I tell you something? Everybody's selling something. If you work a job, you're selling, you're, you're selling yourself to your company for the value you provide on a daily basis. Congratulations, you're in sales. If you are um, promoting um, uh, like active wear to get a 20% off every time you order, congratulations, you are in sales. If you um, are advocating for your child to go to a better school, congratulations, you're in sales. Because I'm not going to let you sell me on a, on a BS school when I know where my kids should go. Um, if you are posting a picture of your food and somebody's like, oh my gosh, that looks so good. What kind of noodles are those? And you tell them, hey, these are actually really healthy. They're vegan friendly. They're edamame noodles from Whole Foods. Congratulations, you're in sales. But because people are so afraid of rejection, they're so afraid of being told, oh my gosh, are you trying to sell me something? Girl, Gucci sold you a $20 purse for 600 Yes, I'm in sales. Any other questions? I thought this was a money-making question. Some of us are not sharing I am because your belief in network marketing is jacked up. You believe that people in network marketing, you need to address that. It's either a money problem or it's a, a rejection someone gave you in the past that, that prevents you from sharing this thing. But for some of us, we need to just increase our belief in network marketing. Because can I tell you, what other model do we know that we could pay $16 to have a business with the potential of paying us $750,000 a month minus the bonuses? I'll wait. Your CEO don't even make $750,000 a month. And so for the people that are afraid to approach their network, <laughs> how crazy is this, y'all? You used to work the same job or work the same job as them, and you're afraid to tell them about an opportunity that is nothing like the job y'all have. <laughs> y'all, that's crazy. We got to get out of our heads, right? You're scared to tell your cousin about the opportunity where you know your cousin be asking your mama for $20 before payday. Hold up, hold up. I want y'all to get some posture right now. There is nowhere in the world. And if you took business classes, let me tell you, I had to take a lot of business classes with my degree. You don't even expect to see profits building a traditional business in the first 12 to 24 months. So get your posture up, you guys. And at first, you may not have as much. But if you get to understanding network marketing and you decide to become a professional about this, you're going to realize, I can have posture. Because posture is not arrogance. Posture is just saying, you know what? I know what I have access to. And if you don't want any parts, I'm good with that. Because guess what? I want all the parts. So we got to get bold about our belief in yourself, in I am, and in network marketing, y'all. And so I want to share a couple of objections with you guys that people struggle with. And I just, I've just learned from, you know, our leaders, other network marketers that objections never have anything to do with you. They either have to do with the industry of network marketing. They either have to do with time or they have to do with money. It's never about the objection. Can I tell you is never about Azariah. The objection is never about Aisha. The objection is never about Alejandra. The objection is never about Cindy. The objection is never about us, y'all. And if you can go into handling objections with that mentality, the questions won't even matter because you'll be looking at them like, oh, what kind of question is this? You don't ask your boss for a W-2, honey. Let, let's move respectfully, okay? Just facts. So price objections. There's so many different ways you can handle right? Let me tell y'all something. If people think that it's expensive to share the academy that is $175 a month, can I tell you that, that, that Beachbody selling a, a, a shake, a nutritional shake for dang near $130 a month, what, what you scared? Of? The only reason, and can I tell you price objection has more to do with your money psychology than it does with the person you're talking to. The reason that a lot of people keep asking, keep telling you it's too expensive and you don't know how to answer that question is because you think it's too expensive. Don't shoot the messenger, I love y'all. But for some of y'all, you don't know how to answer money questions because it's your money psychology is messed up. You think I am is too expensive. And again, I'm gonna tie this into everything else we just talked about. 
you think I am is too expensive because you really never open the product. Because swipe coin alone could be $175 a month. Come on, somebody, if you've been catching them pips. So the only reason you're having a harder time with answering money questions and handling that money objection is because somewhere in your mind, you still feel like this is kind of a lot every month. It's only kind of a lot every month because you're not committed to yourself. That's the only reason. I love you, but that's the reason. And so you're having a hard time overcoming the money objection because somewhere in your mind, you still feel like this is expensive. And you got to fix that. You'll never be able to share this with people if you don't fix that. All right. So one of the first things is when a, when a prospect is telling you it's overpriced, I always tell them, I always ask this question. Uh, just out of curiosity, how much were you expecting to pay to learn a trillion dollar skill set from home, from anywhere in the world? Question mark. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> a lot of times the money objection is coming because they don't have the money. Like it's not because it's expensive, by the way. It's because they don't have money right now. Because if we know seven out of every 10 people don't have $1,000 in a savings account, then that means, and, and actually 45% of the population has $0 in a savings account. And if they're living paycheck to paycheck, they really might have $12 left and trying to give you a hard time because they only got $12 left. And it's kind of embarrassing to be a full-time adult saying you only got $12 left, right? Like, keep it real. I've been there. It's, it's kind of embarrassing to be an adult sacrificing 10 hours a day away from my children and I don't even have $20 left. I've been there. And so a lot of times this money objection is not even coming from a place of of, of you, anything to do with you. It is coming from you if, if you don't know how to answer it and you're having a hard time with that. But most of the time it's because they don't have the money. So I always ask them just out of curiosity, how much money were you expecting to spend to learn a trillion dollar skill set from your phone, literally? A lot of times, guys, if it's them, they won't answer. They'll go ghost. Or they'll say, you know what? Actually, you're right. I, I guess I don't know how much this costs. Then I just, I just school them real quick. Well, just so you know, I mean, there's courses all around the world that you pay $4,500 for three days and you don't even have live instruction. So, right? You can also say, uh, you're right. There, there might be some cheaper options out there that are similar, but the truth is you'd be better off keeping your money than buying those cheap things because they're either fastly labeled or can cause you more harm than good. Y'all hear about them trading bots lately? You're going to get $99 worth of, of a situation, okay? I'm just keeping real with y'all. Like, what, what are they going to do? Come after me? I mean, they're technically illegal, so I would happily go to court. But you guys, we got to wake up and realize, okay, I mean, you're more than happy to go pay a cheaper price, but just understand you're going to get a, a false label and some false earnings as well. Right. And I'll post these objections in um, uh, in the caption or something of the YouTube video. I don't know. I'll, I'll think about a way to share them with you guys. So just understand that the money is never really directly about you or the company. It's like, really, they got twelve dollars left in their checking account or they might be overdrawn or you don't know how to answer because you still somehow in your mind feel like it's expensive. Right. Um, here's another one. Some people will say that they don't wanna hear about your opportunity until they know how much it costs. This is actually a really easy one to answer to. Cause you guys, I'm not afraid to tell anybody what the price is up front. But the truth is we have different options. You guys, we have elite, we have every academy by itself and we got two and free. So here's a perfect objection. And this, the, well, this one doesn't come from me. This comes from Ray Higdon, one of the top network marketers that created some of the most successful network marketers. Uh, there are several different options. And the truth is it may not cost you anything. Go ahead and watch this video to see if it's even a good fit for you. And if it is, we'll quickly know which, which option, again, if you are, if this is a fit for you. Because the truth is, if, if they don't even like what they see when they watch a five-minute video, they're not for you. Public service announcement, they're not for you, and that's okay. Because the price won't even matter if they don't see value in what you show them. That's fine. I don't need you to see value. I know what's here. Next. Yes, no, next. Some will, some won't. So what? Somebody's waiting. I need to get to the somebody's waiting. So I don't care. People that say I don't have the time. Listen, 
get bold and get some posture. Well, if you truly don't have any time, you may need at least something like what we have more than I thought. Cause look, if somebody don't, don't got time to watch a five minute video, they, they, they need something. Cause listen, it, here's the, here's the alternative. I always ask people, what's the alternative? A lot of people are broke and busy. That's a bad combination. You're better off being busy on your way to some wealth than being busy and broke. Cause that doesn't work out. Right. And broke is a mindset, by the way. Like if you're that busy that you're not even open, something's up. You might really need this. Here's another objection. Mine may not be a fit for you, but if, but if I were you and I didn't have any time, I would suggest finding a way to generate residual income that will help free up some of your time as none of us want to work our whole lives. Boom. That's a pain point, y'all. It's a pain point. So let me know in the comments if you guys have like a specific objection that people are giving you that you might, you might be like, I don't really know how to answer this. Cause I don't, I have a lot of obje objections that we can walk through real quick, but I want to know if um, there is a specific objection that maybe you've been getting, or you just don't know how to answer, or maybe you just get stuck and you're like, I kind of know what to say, but like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so let me know in the comments and then we'll go ahead and end this. I really wanted to honor your time. I didn't plan to be on here for an hour, but I just think that we just we just got to get more serious about what it is that we're doing and more serious about um, a sense of urgency over your own life. So let me I'm going to open up. Where's my comment box? I just wanna... All right. So I'm going to give you guys about a minute or so. Go ahead and drop if you have a specific objection. Like people will say, oh, let me think about it. Um, I don't have any money. Some a lot of people won't directly say they don't have any money, but they'll say other things that lead to I don't have money. And honestly, you're a solution seeker. So the minute you let them sell you their BS excuse, they just sold you and you, you didn't sell them a damn thing. So keep that in mind when you're afraid to answer objections. If you're not providing a solution for them, you're letting them sell you on their excuse as to why they can't make time or they can't do whatever they're saying they want to do. So questions, y'all are welcome to unmute as well. This is not like the Francis show, okay? <laughs> um, everyone is doing crypto now. I responded, but not sure if there was something different. Okay, so Mila, did they say everybody's doing crypto now? Yeah, they said that it seems like everybody's doing crypto now. So I can like get the information on her own. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, like I responded like with love and stuff, but I'm like, not the way that we do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's yep. not, everybody is not really doing crypto. It's mm -hmm. just that that's what you see. And that's what people are. Um, that's how they're yeah. bringing conversations about. So I'll give you the way I would answer. Of course, like I said, I'm not an expert, but the way I would answer that is there's a difference between doing crypto and being a participant in our new economy. So when you say doing crypto, can you tell me a little bit more about what you mean? Because doing crypto is maybe buying an asset and hoping something happens. Participating in our evolving economy is a different conversation. So let them tell you more about what, because here's the thing, their perception of what they think doing crypto is might not be nothing like what we're talking about. Like their perception of doing crypto might mean, oh, they told me what to buy. That is the smallest percentage of a crypto conversation you should ever participate in. And so once we know what they mean by everybody's doing crypto, you don't do crypto. Crypto is a way of life. It's an economy. So hopefully that helps. But that's how I would answer. Find out a little bit more about what they mean behind um, everybody's doing crypto. And then we can answer it with some more posture. Anybody else? Questions? Questions? Does that help me, La? Like, just find out more about what that means. Right, Chuck. Like, oh, go ahead, Mila. <laughs> no, I was gonna say, you know how sometimes you just have to eliminate through the conversation. You're like, you know what? This is probably not the person that I want to work with. Or got you, got you. So okay, so after the conversation, but I was just like, it's not a response that I've gotten too mm -hmm. often. People are like, really. Some people are really interested, but when she said that, I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Um, I'm going to give you a 
Okay, so in that conversation, just quickly, when you when you say like, have you found yourself in that conversation being like, this is probably not even somebody that I really want to work with. Like, <laughs> did you feel like that at any point in the conversation? Yeah, and that's why I was like, you know what? Like, I the the response that I'm asking from you is not so that I can go back and try to have another conversation with her is just in case somebody else does really say that, but they're sincere about it. Right. 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 Okay. So, yep. So what I will say is always, um, always take the conversation back. You never leave it in their court. You control the conversation. So a way to disqualify them and let them know that what you're doing is serious. You could say something like, um, you know what? That's totally okay. We actually, um, we spend, we invest a lot of time to train people to really participate in cryptocurrency as the economy that it is because their everyday life will involve crypto. And so we want to invest our, in our time in people that are really serious about it, not just people that are doing crypto. So if anything changes in a few weeks to a few months, I would love to revisit this conversation, but I have, you know, I have other people to help. We can pick this up in a couple weeks or a couple months, like take the conversation back. And I, I can type out verbatim what I would say, but it's a way of saying like, listen, we don't do crypto. We're teaching people how to become their own economy. If mm-hmm. your mind changes later, we can revisit this. But right now I have some serious people to go help. Does that make sense? Like take it back. Don't ever yes. leave them the conversation. So I'll type that out and I'll send it in our chat. So you guys have some go-tos to um, any other ones that you guys feel like, man, I get this a lot, or I don't really know how to answer this or anything like that. I would love to help you. And I'm actually going to learn, like close this recording.